And what we're looking at behind me is our Ram TRX with their WMS 1200 package. This truck was actually built a year and a half ago. They put down 893 to the ground on my dyno, about 775 foot pounds of torque. And obviously my dyno reads a little bit lower. It's a loaded Mustang dyno. So on average they're 12 to 14% off from different dynos. But the purpose of the videos is not to kind of sit here and call out numbers, what is, what isn't, but it's to show you a true A to B Delta from a year ago to the mods that we did now. So to give you a high level overview of what the truck has, it's got a gen, at the time it had a gen five, three liter Whipple. It had ARH headers, two by threes. It had a Corsa Extreme catback exhaust, our custom five inch intake. It had a uh, 3125 upper at 10% lower uh, plugs. It had um, a catch can, thermostat, just the supporting mods. We added a chiller eventually. So the truck put down 893 in that setup. Fast forward to a year, the customer wants to stay PD, positive displacement. So we literally went to the Gen 6 3.8 liter Whipple that just came out and we just got it installed in tune at this truck. So I wanna take you guys with me and just show you the numbers, show you the differences before and after. We literally removed the supercharger put the 3.8 in there and that's it. We didn't make any changes to the setup. We didn't make any changes to the pulleys, the injectors, the fuel system. All of that stuff stayed the same as it was a year and a half ago. Now keep in mind this truck ran a best of 10.4 at 129 miles an hour on that setup, making a 93 to the dyno. We are getting ready to go street tune it now and make sure everything is good and eventually put it back on the track. So let's take a look at the truck. Let's go over to the dyno. I have everything pulled up, see the before and after. So you guys can see a true A to B Delta. And for those of you guys looking to get a Whipple or something like that, you can see your options. Now, full disclosure, I will not, <laughs> I will not recommend this. This is a Ottoman truck. It's an R and D truck. The customer's super cool. He actually has wanted us to blow this truck up about a year ago. We are the ones that are like, no, chill, let it live, enjoy it. So if it wasn't for us, he probably would have sent, we full send and blown it up. So built it, you know, you name it. So yeah, just kind of share that context there. I don't recommend this for a stock truck. You have to get created with pulleys. If you want to run 93, especially you have to go with a larger pulley. In this case, this truck is on E85. It's got 1300 CC injectors, JMS booster pump. The ramping is set up appropriately. Everything looks fine, it's cherry. We've been working on this car for about a week and a half, just getting data, r and d tuning it, tweaking it, and we're satisfied with the results. So let's look, shall we? And then we'll give you a startup clip, maybe a couple uh, drive-bys here and there so you guys can see drivability and, and all the good stuff. So from the top, nothing too different. This is a custom TRX intake, and basically you have the gills here, which just resembles TRX claws. But if you look closely, it's actually a fresh air inlet for air to come in and come to the filter. A five inch housing, Mighty Mouse catch can. Gen 5, Gen 6, 38 liter now with the AN fittings. It's got an inner chiller. Um, so it's, it's really nice tucked away. It's a good setup, right? Ram TRX here, 2021 model, which are some of the stronger ones. But let's look at the numbers here before and after. So you can see the previous horsepower and torque. Horsepower is identified by the red line. Torque is by the blue line but we can look at the Delta here. The previous peak was in, in terms of uh, horsepower, it was about 880 horsepower, and now we're at 1,000. Torque came in at 804, now it's 943 foot-pounds. So the Delta is, it says negative because I overlaid the previous one first instead of the new one, so that's why it says that, but it actually picked up 138 foot-pounds and 119 at the wheels from a blower swap. Like no pulley, no nothing. We literally went from the 3.0 to the 3.8 and we saw about it's moving about 60% more air from the data logs that we got. So this is cool because those are the peak numbers, but what we kind of care about is area under the curve, right? If we look at both logs here from the hit, let's say we do a roll race at 3000, the previous numbers torque is what we care about because that's what keeps it moving. So at 3000 RPMs, this thing makes 709 foot pounds before. Now it makes 859 foot pounds of torque. And this horsepower carries all throughout the entire RPM band. And even on the big end where this kind of starts to fall off here, the 3.8 wants to keep going. So I shut it down at about 7,000. This one I shut off at 6,700, but this thing is like still carrying power. 
You know what I'm saying? So this has helps me because it knows, like for example, the next mods that we're gonna do is obviously bottom end, rod and piston, heads cam. But when I spec the heads cam and, and, and have the heads to match the cam and the bottom end, the converter, the all that good stuff, I don't really care about bringing the power down low because we have way more than enough power. I care about bringing it in mid range here to kind of complement it. What I mean to say is, we're easier on the drivetrain. Like if I add three, 100, 100 foot pounds where it's already making 800 and it's making 900 foot pounds at 3000 RPM, it's gonna break on the track. So we're trying not to do that. So basically understanding these data, understanding these numbers, it kind of helps pave the way. So I know I have fuel system. I know I have injector. We know where this truck makes power. It's gonna be a beast mid range, rolls all the way up to the top end. So on the track, this thing's gonna move on the big end. I need to focus on that. So the idea here is to bring the power in very linear, get it off the hole. It's got enough to get out the hole. And right when the truck plants, boom, mid range, that's where that mid range power comes in. So when we do the heads cam and everything, that's kind of what we're gonna take into account. That way it's not blowing tires, it's not wheel hopping, it's leaving pretty easy. And as it gets on power, boom, we're kind of like helping it, right? We're giving it a little push, some little up top. So in general, that's it. There's a lot more to that, but man, those results are super impressive. Just from swapping a blower on there, stock bottom end, stock everything, you know, I'm assuming if you have a built engine, more displacement, that number is going to go up substantially, but to kind of keep things safe and just have data to go off of, this is a good start. So join us. Let's see how it drives. Our throttle, very smooth, very linear. And again, this truck has different modes, so the truck's gonna behave one way in one mode. Um, if it wants to do smoky burnout, it's cool, put it in this mode. If it wants it to hook up and leave, put it in this mode, regardless of traction is on and off. These are just some cool things that you can do in the calibration, and that's what it's set up for. The customer wants to drive it, he wants to have fun, but he also wants to beat on it and send it and you know launch good at the track. So that was kind of the premise this year, and just tailoring it to their specific goals. So that was cruising there. We're gonna put it in sport mode here. Let's just make sure. And it, it, it has a completely different profile. Even sports pros is more aggressive, the throttle is more responsive. But even with that throttle body, it's it's good, it's manageable, it's good. So in sport mode, leave it out of here. That's kind of good because at low RPM, let's say I wanted to do like a, a 30 roll or, or 40 roll, like that's where that's gonna shine. All that air is gonna rush in to the supercharger. The supercharger is gonna compress it, shove it down into the engine, which is in turn gonna produce more power. So that's the idea behind running 130 millimeters per auto body. The trade-off is drivability, right? Larger inlet, more turbulence, more disturbance. That's gonna create a different driving profile. So balancing the two takes a little bit of work, a lot of street driving, but just for the sake of this, I'm, I'm gonna do like a low row from a 40. This thing is a monster. So let me just make sure it's clear here and we have nothing. I'm just gonna go through one or two gears and uh, let's see how this looks. So make sure this guy doesn't turn in front of me. It's gonna blow the tires, but you gotta be ready for that. And we're just gonna send it. There we go, traction. Okay, slow down. But yeah, like that response is kind of what we're looking for. And what that's simulating is someone pulling up next to you at a traffic light and you having that power to pass them without the truck hopping all over the place. So just one thing we look for when we're street tuning, we're gonna look at that, see that log, make sure it's good, and then revise and change as necessary. 